Hello, I'm going to show you guys how to make a burlap ruffle wreath. This is the burlap that I'm using. It is 12 by 10 yards, and I'm only using one roll. How thick it is. And I'm using a wire wreath form, just a plain one with nothing attached to it. This works best for this type of wreath. If you have one that already has um, the tinsel wire attached to it like this, that's okay. You'll just have to add some more. So you need to buy either some more tinsel wire or some Chanel stems. This one is about 16 inches in diameter. You can go with a smaller one, it'll be fuller. If you go larger than this, I recommend you buy more than one roll because you'll, you do want to fill it in. And after time, with burlap, it settles and it will leave gaps, so you might have to add more after you know six months, a year, if you keep reusing the wreath. So again, this is the tinsel wire I'm using. You can use pipe cleaners or Chanel stems. I just prefer this because, as you can see, it matches the burlap. Okay, I've already cut most of this into 12 inch strips. It's not exact, it's just a guide for me to go, go for since it's 10 inches long. So I'm gonna show you how I'm cutting these. I saved just a little bit on the roll. So I'm just giving it a quick cut. It doesn't have to be straight. You won't notice when it's on the wreath. And as you can tell, it kind of gets a little curly as it gets down to the bottom of the roll. That's okay. I'll just add some cuteness to the wreath. This is a really simple wreath. It does take a little bit of time since you're cutting and you're attaching so many strips, but it's so versatile. You can use it for just about anything and you can add things, you know, for different seasons with it. And now that I've got this one long piece, I'm going to cut this one in half and have two sh little shorter pieces. And as you can see, they're real curly, so it'll be cute. But I'm going to save those for last. And I've already cut the tinsel wire into little strips. And I've already attached a lot of it. I left this space. Here's what it looks like on the bottom. And as you can see, there are six sections. And I started out with, I'm putting three in each section. And then I'll see how many I have left after that and add those as we go. Okay, so I'm just going to take this and uh, right in the center, this is the cut side on each end. And I'm just gonna gather it in the middle, like this. Take my tinsel wire, fold it around the bottom side, and then I'm gonna put it in the middle. Make sure you guys are seeing that. Okay. And then I'm gonna give it a couple of twists because you don't want it to come undone. I'm going to push it up. I'm going to grab another piece. And see, I'm leaving the good side out. I want to ruffle it with the part where I cut. Again, I'm going in the middle. And the reason why I'm going in the middle is because if I put it on this side or this side, it would fall over. When I hold up the wreath, those sections would, like that one, would fall out and that one would fall in. So if you do it in the middle, and then kind of press those down because you don't want them sticking up. See, it's not going to fall over because it's got a wire on each side, but you can't see those after I've attached that. And I'm just ruffling that like that. Here's what it looks like on the bottom. Fold it over. I'm not tying it until I get it on the form. And this is this is called a wire wreath form. Give it a couple of twists, push it down. Okay. Now I also like to you know give some of them a twist because I want them going in different directions. I don't want them going the same direction. You can do that. It'll give it a different look. I just like the look this gives. Okay, now 
I need to see how many pieces I have left over to see where I can fill in. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No, I can almost do two more in each one. So I'm going to go ahead and fill these in. And on the one that I end up with one fewer, I am going to put my bow on that. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to add a bow. I'll go ahead and fill in one of these sections and show you and make the bow and show you what it's going to look like. So I'm roughing that. Like that. So I've got one, two, three, four. I'm going to add one here. making it even more full and you can't see that form. You just want to kind of mess with them, and move them around. And I will finish that in a little while. I'm going to go ahead and do my bow, show you guys what that looks like. And I have three partial ribbons here. I have this cute, colorful ribbon that would be so cute for spring and summer. And then I have a yellow and a pink and you can see this pink is like just like the burlap and this is the same kind of texture it's just flatter I guess and it's more filled in so I'm gonna start with the pattern first because I want it on top and I'm just gonna use a pipe cleaner for this and I have some light green so I'm gonna use lime green pipe cleaner for this I'll take it off this roll going to take it. I'm going to leave a little tail. I want a little tail there. And I'm going to make smaller loops for this top one. So about like that. I'm going to give this a twist on the bottom so the pattern is on top. Plus it makes the bow look fuller and prettier. Give it a twist and pinch. Twist and pinch. Kind of ravel that on me. You just keep pinching, twisting, and going back and forth from each side until you run out. So I'm going to leave that one. I'm going to go with the yellow next. I think it'll pop better. And I want the tail on this one to come off that side. So I'm going to start with my tail on that side. loops just a little bit bigger. I'm pinching and twisting and making a loop. I usually throw these rolls on the floor when I'm making a bow so it's getting to me a little bit here. Trying to hold all this and do it. Get a better grip on that. Okay. So I've got, which I ended up with my tail over there, but that's okay. I can make it go whichever direction I want it to. I want some tails going off in all different directions. Uh oh. Okay. So here's what it looks like. And I'm going to go ahead and Tie this on there and then start making the other side because it's getting to be a little difficult to hold on to. I just want to put that on there and pull it really tight and then just give it like one turn. So I'm going to make this tail come off. 
going to make this bow separately and then I'll attach it. Making some bigger loops. And I'm just going to make like three loops on this one. And just one tail. Like this. And I'm going to take this one and I want to put the two loops on that side that had less loops. And I'm going to take my Chanel stem, if I can find the other piece of it. Okay. Fold it over, make sure I get all of them on there. Pull it as tight as I can and give it a twist. And I somehow missed a yellow there. Okay, I'll get it in a second. Okay, so I'm just going to move these around like this and shape them where I want them and move the tails where I want them. And I can cut the ends like this and up. Or it's like this. Or you could just cut them at a slant. I do it both ways. It's just what mood I'm in, I guess. Be that pretty tail. That one's already cut at a slant, so I can do different ways. You can also just uh, fold it under to get a clean end if you want. I know sometimes those wires stick out. And if you're having that problem where they're sticking out, you can just fold in the very ends there if you need to. Okay, so that's my big bow. And when I'm ready to attach it, I will just find a spot in here and I'll kind of pull these back so I show a little bit of space. And then I'll attach it to Probably two of the wires. Flip it over. I don't want to smash it, but I just want to flip it over and then give it a tight twist. Twist it a couple of times. It's like that. And then put your tails where you want them. Move your loops around where you want them. So I like having tails come off all different directions, especially when I'm doing a multi-layer bow like this. So that's what the bow looks like on there. And I will add some more of the burlap to make it even thicker. And you could add more ribbon throughout if you want to. This is just a simple way to do it. And you can change out your bows for different seasons and you could add little stems or whatever you wanted throughout it, but I like to make these burlap wreaths and then you can just change them out, like I said, with the bows and the, and the decorations. You can even put a sign in the middle or you can put your initial on one side. It's just real versatile so you can just reuse the wreath and just change out the decorations and the bow. Okay guys, have a great day. Thanks.